Okay, Carmen, you told me at your place of your uh, parents or great-great-grandparents and ancestry was Italy. Yes. Uh, what was the reason why they came over here to America? Did they ever talk to you about that? Yeah, my, my grandfather, Joe Tassone, he passed away in 1963, so I remember him a little bit, but it was my grandmother that um, I really had a lot of conversations with about them coming over. They both came over here in 1924, be, basically because of land of opportunity. Uh, back then, Italy was economically depressed, politically it was depressed, um, and my grandmother, once she came to this country, she literally never wanted to go back to Italy. She, she loved this country. She kissed the ground she walked on in this country. So uh, just for a better opportunity. Okay. I wanted to ask you also, Carmen, since I have you in my presence today, which I'm honored to have you here today. I understand that your family has been in the shoe cobbler business for three generations. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Well, when my grandfather came over here um, back in Italy, and a lot of the other European countries, uh, when you went to school, maybe you stopped at sixth grade, eighth grade, and then you went on to a trade school. Well, my grandfather went on to the trade school to learn how to uh, fix shoes and make shoes in Italy. So when he came to this country, um, he first actually started out here at the Bessemer Cement Factory in Bessemer, Pennsylvania. Worked there for a little bit, and um, this was after he got married. They got married, they came here in 1924, got married in 1925. Uh, worked in the Bessemer Cement Factory. Uh, I, don't, I really don't know how many years. And then still, then opened up his first uh, shoe repair store, shoe repair shop in the corner of Oak Hill and Myrtle in Youngstown, right down the street from St. Pat's Church. Okay. Uh, do you remember what age, Carmen, did you start helping your father in the shoe shop, for example? Yeah, I started by age 11. Um, I remember I just wanted to make some money for Christmas, just to have some Christmas money. So I asked my dad, you know, to come up here. So I used to come up here on a Saturdays, worked about 10 hours, made 50 cents an hour, started, you know, literally scrubbing floors, washing windows, sweeping the floors, and um, kind of worked my way up in this big corporation, so to speak. All right, sir. Uh, Carmen, how did the, the name Tassone, um come about? And I see that's what's on your, your marquee out there and your your name is Amadio, but how, how did the Tassone name come about? Yeah, Tassone was my mother's maiden name. Obviously my grandfather's um, last name was uh, Tassone. First name was Joe Tassone. So um, just from my mother, this was on my mother's side of the family, not on my father's side of the family. Before I go too much further, I want to ask you, um, well, what are some of your fondest memories or and that you have about your father and your grandfather in particular. Are there any special moments? Yeah, like I said, um, I don't remember that much about my grandfather. I just remember a couple times um, coming up the shop. Uh, this was back the shop when we were on Market Street. Just coming up with him and just, uh, just walking, just following him around. I don't, like I said, don't remember too much about that. Um, but my father, um, I do remember some things, a lot of things about my father. One of the, the fondest memories I guess I can think of is when I was, when I kind of first started out, um, about 15 minutes before we were closing, he would just grab a handful of pennies and we would just go pitch pennies until, uh, until closing time, you know. So we kind of had fun doing that and, you know, but um, there was a lot of other memories. But that's something when you asked me, the first thing that came into my mind. Oh, yeah, here's a real good question I have to ask you, sir, as I'm feeling comfortable talking to you now for certain. Uh, how many years have you owned your shop, and how many years have you um, been at this location? Well, we've been at this location since 1981. Um, my grandfather moved out of Youngstown in 1948, moved to Boardman, to a place at, um, on Market Street where at that time it was nothing but cornfields. And I remember my grandmother telling me, that when my grandfather wanted to move, everybody told him he was nuts. He says, what are you moving out from Youngstown to a cornfield for? So he had um, kind of a uh, futurist, futuristic vision on what he wanted to do. But we had two other locations besides here, before here in Boardman, and then we moved here in 1981, summer of 1981. And um, my father um, retired in 1988, so I officially took over in 1988 as the owner and operator of Tassone Shoe, Boot and Shoe Repair. Uh, Carver, where were some of those other locations? You remember? Yeah, um, I think the first location, I think it was 6211. 
It's right across the street from uh, Fithian Burial Vault. There's an insurance company there now. My grandfather um, built that building at that time, and it was one half was uh, the shoe store and um, um, shoe repair. The other half was a pharmacist, if I remember right. And then in 1955, I believe, 1954-55, he moved a couple blocks south to an address of 6538 Market Street, which is on the corner of Market Street and um, um, Marlindale and Boardman. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Uh, well, what kind of services do you provide your customers here at Shaw Carmen? Well, Tassone's Boot and Shoe Repair here, we're a full-service boot and shoe repair. Um, we do a lot of jackets, uh, zippers, uh, leather jackets, tears, rips, and leather jackets. Obviously, a complete line of shoe repairing on women's, women's shoes, men's shoes, boots. We do luggage repair. We do an awful lot of orthopedic repair, a lot of ele uh, orthopedic elevations on it, a lot of shoe modifications uh, we get from prescriptions. We do a lot of diabetic work from prescriptions, um, custom diabetic shoes, custom orthotics, off-the-shelf diabetic shoes, off-the-shelf diabetic orthotics. Um, and just a, uh, it's one of the things that my father always um, kind of taught me. He always took in stuff that was non-conventional, non-shoe repair stuff, kind of like odds and ends. And we try to fit that in if I can. So uh, we fix tents as far as um, the zippers on tents. Uh, you name it, we'll, 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 we'll try to fix it. Okay. Um... Hey, have you um, thought about it? How, how many more years do you want to keep the shop open? That's a good question. I think about that a lot, and um, I don't really have any plans to retire, you know, God willing, with my health um, being good. So um, I guess as long as I'm still healthy, uh, I can't give you an answer right now because I'm not really sure. I, I don't have, you know, I'm not going to say, well, when I'm 65 or 67, I'm going to retire. I don't see that in the future. So... I'll let you know. Yeah, I understand that. You, you enjoy your craft. Yeah, I do. You, I call you an artist myself because the trade is all lost. Um, I'm tra the trade is being um, diluted as we speak. With not a lot of people coming behind you, Carmen, to um, follow in your shoes, so to speak, in the shoe cobbler business or trade, if you will. Um, so, you know, I, I look at your hands as being a skilled, uh, those of an artist, if you will. Would you say so? Do you consider yourself an artist, Carmen? Um, it's a trade, um, uh, you know, I do this every day, I don't really think of myself as, a, as an artist, other people have said that, if that's what they want to say, that's fine, I don't really, you know, see that, but um, I just look at, think of myself as a tradesman. Yeah, I think we're playing off the fact that we say it's a lost art. So yeah, to speak, that, that like, is, I will, like I will they all say, that, where it's a lost piece of art or a lost art where people just don't want to do it anymore. That's exactly will. right, yes. Uh, Carmen, if I was a young man coming into the trade, what kind of tips could you give me if I was starting off in this business? Well, if you're going to come into a, to a business like this, you have to work. Um, you know, you just can't say, well, I'm going to open up a couple days a week or a couple hours a week. Um, you have to have patience. Um, you know, you have to learn. You have to learn your skill. You have to um, um, uh, practice your skill. So, I mean, every day I'm learning. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times, how many things I learned from customers, you know. I'm looking at something they want me to fix, and I'm scratching my head, and, and they might suggest something. I'll say, then I'll think to myself, why didn't I think of that, you know. So, uh, just be open. Just, you know, don't think you know it all. Um, you know, but, but you, you know, you have to work. That's, that's one thing. You have to come to work and, and uh, devote some time to this business or to any business. Uh, in closing, Carmen, um, being here on what I call the world's famous uh, route in Ohio, if you will, Route 224, um, what have been some of the changes you've seen on the corridor here in the years that you've been here? Um, any profound things that you've seen that come about on the strip here, any things that you witnessed through the um, passage of time or anything like that? Yeah, there's a lot of businesses that, that are coming and going. Um, businesses that were here when I first started out are no longer here. Um, but the good news is other businesses have, have taken the place. Um, right across the street is the Borman Plaza. Um, there was a time when the vacancy factor in the Borman Plaza was like 25%. Uh, now, thank goodness, um, a lot of those vacancies are filled. So, you know, 
businesses around here is, is good. Uh, traffic is moving. People complain about how much traffic is on 224. I really don't think there's a lot of traffic, but traffic is good. That means people are coming and going, they're buying, they're shopping. Um, you know, it's, it's all commerce, it's, it's, it's all good. You know, compared to traffic here, to compared to, to other parts of the country, this really is nothing. So um, this, this, this general vicinity, general location is, is, is really good for business because it's a business hub. It's a central business district for really Mahoney County. So um, it, it's, it's really good. I, I really see a lot of potential and i um, kind of excited about what's, what's coming into this area. Do you remember, Carmen, in your years being out here, uh, some of your former colleagues, and um, are they still in business, or you know, about the same time that when you opened back in the day, some of those other shoe cobblers, or I won't, won't hate to use the word competition, but those of your colleagues who also was doing what you're doing, did any of them survive like you, or are they still in business? Yeah, there's, there's another shoe repair shop um, that's third generation like myself. Uh, he moved out of Youngstown into Boardman. Um, there is a shop in Austin Town that's no longer there, shoe repair shop. That gentleman, he's also a pedorthist like myself. He moved on, he's now working for the VA. There's another shop in Columbiana. But other than that, um, there used to be so many shops when I first started and back in the 70s when I was really working here. Um, and unfortunately, you know, when the, when, the, when the shop owner died or retired, nobody was there to take their place. I remember people telling me there was a shoe repair shop literally on every corner in Youngstown. Whether that's a little hyperbole or not, I don't know, but I guess that just means that there was a lot back in the day. And um, like anything else, um, like you were saying, the shoe repair industry is, is kind of dwindling, unfortunately, because nobody really wants to get into it anymore. Um, it's a job that you have to get your hands dirty, you have to work. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I, I've seen a big change in the industry in the many years that I've been working. Okay, Carmen, I thank you for giving us time this day. Um, I don't know if you n knew this or not, that being a shoe cobbler or for Darth Dorothy, as you say, um, that you're a very important company as far as the Valley go. Did you know the Warner Brothers' parents owned the shoe shop? I didn't know that. Uh, they I owned the shoe that. shop in downtown Youngstown on the East End. Hmm, I didn't uh, know they that. Were, uh, had a butcher shop as well. And they were willing to try almost any and everything. They, one of the brothers, Harry, went on to even open a bi uh, bicycle shop on the west end of Federal Street downtown as well. Uh, but the Warners were known to always jump into different um, businesses, if you will, just to try to make it. And, uh, of course, they chose the right thing ultimately and became um, uh, part of the movie making industry, the pioneers, if yeah. you will, the movie industry, and went off to Hollywood in uh, New York and Hollywood, prospectively, and and uh, would look back because they would return to the city um, often um, just to um, pay homage to where they got their business um, jump, uh, if you will, and that was from the uh, Mahoney Valley community as a whole. Carmen, I thank you very much for coming into my Napier Vision studio, I call it away from my studio, and sitting here and um, being so patient and sharing some of the history of um, your trade and the business here, to sewn shoe and boot repair. Well, thank I'm you Justin Napier Sr. And, uh, in closing, Carmen, go ahead. I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Hey, Carmen, I'm looking on the wall here. I'm seeing some artifacts, uh, a lot of artifacts to be exact. Uh, we won't count the, the uh, alligator up there. <laughs> I see there's an alligator up there represented. But some of the other shoe, and um, I see an old torch, I think, up there. Describe some of the artifacts I'm looking at. Maybe there's some stories behind some of them. Yeah, my parents were big in, uh, on uh, in antiques. They used to go antiquing and just buying a lot of stuff. Knickknacks up there, but uh, my father knew an old Italian guy. Uh, his name was Tony, and uh, he brought in a lot of the old artifacts for my dad. And over the time, uh, certain people would say, "Hey, I've got this. You want it?" And my dad would say, "Yeah, we'll we'll put it up somewhere." So that's what all those artifacts are for. I'm not really sure, um, you know, who gave it to him or uh, you know why, but uh, you know, I just thought I just thought it was you know. I'm looking at a shoe machine right down here with the white shoe in it. What would you call that piece of That's a stretcher. machinery? Yep. That's a shoe These stretcher. are stretchers. Yeah, they stretch this shoe. This machine stretches the shoes length and width wise. So if you need a shoe stretch, this is one of the machines oh, okay. we use. Then there's another red one over there. Maybe you'll get to a little bit later. 
uh, which will stretch them out also. Okay, when I think of shoe stretcher, I'm thinking of these old wooden type up yeah, here. Yeah, those, the right, those only stretch. <laughs> right, now we sell those, uh -huh. um, you can buy, but we also use them to stretch shoes. Those only stretch the width part of it. These machines here will stretch not only the length, but the width. Oh, okay, I see they even got some areas on there if you have bunions or corners. Yeah, those are bunion attachments, yeah, exactly. Bunions attachments, okay. I see an old handsaw up here. Is that one of the uh, artifacts or is that a piece uh, part of the family no, business? No, that's one of my trade? dad's artifacts. Why he brought that up there, I have no idea. Okay. Oh, God. I see we got some more down here. Yeah, more stretches there. We got there. the uh, crank goods. There's some more actually inside the shoe there. Yep, that was so a almost, stretch. almost every size shoe is represented there. Uh, I could take by the zippers here that you do zipper work yep, as yeah, well. Yeah, we do a lot of zippers on leather jackets. Uh, uh -huh. Replace a lot of zippers. You so. do le leather jackets. Do you work on luggage and hand purses or anything like that, yep. Carmen? Women's purses, um, leather jackets, luggage. Um, you know, lowering. We lower a lot of women's heels. Uh, that's that's a. Uh, we do a lot of work with that. I'm seeing you got some more thighs over here as well. Uh, yeah. You, you, are you able to sell a lot of those? Cause I would yeah, we, we do shoes. a lot of custom orthotics. This, mm -hmm. is, uh, this is one of the molds. Actually, I made this mold when I was in Podorthic school. This is my foot. So wow. this is what we, we vacuum form. We, we, we uh, take a mold of your foot out of plaster, mm -hmm. and we vacuum form an orthotic from this. Okay, I think I even seen some. I don't know if there were foam molds uh, laying around. Uh, yeah, there's, these are just um, okay. not really molds. But those are some orthotics, but those aren't from from the molds. Okay. Um, I don't think I have right now. All, all my right. um, all my custom orthotics are, are out. Well, take me in the back here, Charmin. Uh, what I call Carmen the lab. Take me in the lab back here. We'll, we'll see some more, if you will, some intricate pieces of machinery. But what's the shoe cobbler yeah, shop? Yeah, it's a shoe repair you know, shop. It, it's not a. Yeah, well, there you go. Before you came in, Joe, I was working on this luggage, put, trying to put a handle on it. Haven't finished it yet, but. This is all the equipment um, that we use. Most, some of this equipment my grandfather had, like this. This, um, it's called a five-in-one. This was my grandfather's. This cuts the soles, um, skives some of the leather soles. Okay. This machine here, it's a sander, sands down soles, sands down heels. Okay, gets um, the burrs off, smooths yeah, things yeah, out, levels yeah. things so if you out. Want if you heels know. or soles. It also trims it. Um, this here, um, it's an automatic nailer. Um, okay. Come back here. This is my line finisher where we sand and trim a lot of the shoes before we um, we send them out. And our finisher where we shine a lot of shoes. Mm -hmm. um, That's workbench. a very interesting piece of equipment. That's one long. Yeah, it's a one machine, long piece. If you will. Yeah, and my father bought this in, I believe, 1973. Wow. When he bought that, so. Oh, we're looking at a lot of history. What's yeah. some of those black machines over there, the green types? I'm seeing with little lamps. Yeah, on. this is this. What these you call machines? Those? They stitch the soles on men's shoes, and um, okay. they they both still work. This was my grandfather's. Mm -hmm. He bought this in 1947. Still runs, still. Run. I don't use it that often okay. anymore. But those it's, are those do the same thing, those two. Yep, yeah, they 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 do the same thing. Yeah. Um, okay. And what's what's sad was um, there was a time in World War II. Uh -huh. You had guys who were in the army. They actually went around. They were shoe repairmen. They were on the front line, maybe about a mile behind the front line. Hmm. And they had a trailer. They wow. set up a trailer. So if someone needed their shoes fixed, they would send them there. Right there. So hmm. when they retired from the army. They worked for a company called Landis or Sutton, which was the big machine companies at the time. And they went around to all the shoe repair shops to fix these. Because okay. they were literally, one of the guys told me to pass their final exam. Mm -hmm. Literally, they had to take these all apart, every wow. nut and bolt, and put it back together without a manual. I mean, they wow. just, that was there. Because when you're out in the field, mm -hmm. you, be you know, you couldn't call the repair guy to come in a mile behind the, um, the fighting line to Correct. fix your machine. So they had to do it. So they came in and did it. But what's sad was, now nobody does it. I can do a look, I can do some minor maintenance on that machine, and I, I have done some maintenance on that. But if there's some major work mm -hmm. needs to be done, exactly. I've got to send this down um, to somebody else to do right it. On. It's kind of expensive. It'd be to costly. Do that. 
that machine yeah. in the back of you that want to go this vertical is just another stitcher. right there stitchers yep this is another stitcher and that's a stitcher right to the left there as well uh, the brown no one. this this is another what we call like an auto solar it, it, it actually uh, automatically nails um, heels to to shoes okay and this this coil here if you can see it mm -hmm, I can this see is it. the wire this is right the nail so it cuts it at certain lengths or long I want it to in. cut it mm-hmm yeah okay wow wow I'm standing and, in a kind of like this is not an Egyptian tomb yeah There's a lot of valuable is, things in here I'm just honored yeah. to be standing in here if you will with Carmen Deer again this is uh, my workstation. I see you got a couple TVs back here. Do they still work? No, a TV doesn't work. It's now a radio. So we just use this oh, radio. Right. Um, yes, sir. We have the, when, this, when the digital era uh -huh. came, uh, right came in, that's the old analog television. So What's these manual looking things sitting on the table with the stand with the chrome? Yeah, top? these these what are um, those things? These are lasts. Uh -huh. You know, you take them off if you want like a women's high heel. Mm -hmm. if you want to work on it, you put this in. Or if you want to work on men's shoes, you put this in. Okay. Um, What's this, those things with the handles on it, dear? It looks like these. On uh, to you, right here, directly ahead. Dear. Oh, this. Oh, these are press. Okay. So if you want to put like soles on his shoes, soles and shoes, um, you stick this form. I don't have a pair of shoes, but you stick this right. form in a shoe. I got you. Uh -huh. And then you put this down into presses, so it puts a lot of pressure on the soles. Okay. Um, just just to bond it in place until the glue actually kind of like if you do glue dry. work for soles exactly. and stuff like that yep Carmen? yep you know just like if you're a carpenter when you when you glue something together you put clamps on it mm -hmm. let it till yeah, it dries see and bark this clamps, is exactly what, what this is except this okay. for shoes well, all right i understand i had a couple of years of a wood shop at least and i yeah, understand so a little you know, bit yeah these are, to these the terminology there <laughs> yeah okay well thank you for it's my honor to be able to stand in the lab with Carvin Amidio here. And uh, we're here in the uh, merry month of March, as I call it, uh, 2020. Carvin, I thank you very much for consenting to this.